Hello, my name is Joe Hoyle, and I am the president of CPA Review for Free. And our website has 2,500 free questions and answers to help you pass the CPA exam. However, today we're going to look at capital leases and talk about specifically from the lessor side. If I have a few extra minutes at the end, I'll also look at the lessee side. The lessor, as you probably know, is the person who owns the property. The lessee is the person who uses the property. When you have a capital lease for a lessor, it can either be a direct financing lease or a sales type lease. In this lesson, we're going to talk about direct financing leases. It's a direct financing lease if it is never sold. It is, the company is not a dealer or a manufacturer. They are not in the business of selling this item. They're only in the business of leasing it. Therefore, all of the profits will be interest. So what's going to happen in this question? They're going to buy a car for $40,000 in cash, and they're going to buy it on January 1, year 1. The car has a five-year life and no residual value. Nothing odd or unusual about that. Then they're going to lease the car for five years. Now, anytime your lease is 75% or more of the life of the asset, in this case it's 100%, that makes the lease a capital lease. So I put that in so you knew it was a capital lease. Now, they're not going to lease this car for $40,000. They want to make a profit. So what they're going to do is they're going to add in interest at a 10% implicit rate. The lessor adds in interest, and that interest that's added in is called the implicit rate. How do we get started? Notice here that everything starts on January 1, and the payments are made on January 1. Well, let's start by determining what they would charge. How much will they charge in order to make that 10% implicit rate? Our present value of formula is present value equals the future cash flows, which in this case is the payments, times the present value conversion rate. In this case, they have just bought this car for $40,000, so the car has a present value of $40,000. We don't know what the payments are going to be, but we can look the conversion rate up in a present value table. We need to know three things. What is the interest rate? The interest rate is 10%. How many time periods are there? There are five time periods. It's five years. And what is the cash pattern? It's an annuity due. They're making the payments at the very beginning. I looked up a conversion rate for 10% and five years and an annuity due. And that turned out to be 4.17. Now what you have to do is very much like Algebra 1. You want to solve the question for the future cash flows. If you solve the question for the future cash flows, they're going to charge $9,592. If they charge $9,592 for this $40,000 car, that is the equivalent of making a 10% implicit interest rate every year. Once you know the payments, then we can start making our journal entries, and the journal entries will begin on January 1, year 1, when they buy the car. They debit car, because they bought it, for $40,000, and they credit cash for $40,000. Then becomes what I think is probably the most important entry. We have to record that least receivable. Usually, whenever you have future cash flows, you have to take the present value. But you can see right here that the present value is $40,000. The future cash flows were com 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 computed. The 9592 is computed based on a present value of $40,000. If we now take the present value of this, we're going to come back to $40,000. If you add in 10% and then take present value to take the 10% back out, you're going to arrive back at the same $40,000. So we already know that the present value is $40,000. That's our least receivable. And of course, you have to take the car off the books because the car has been conveyed to the lessee. And you're almost through. One more thing happens. On that first day, a cash payment is made, and that cash payment is $9,592, and the least receivable goes down. That has reduced the amount of the receivable. It's 
always important in a lease problem or a bond problem to know what the principal is. The receivable was forty thousand to begin with. The first payment was nine thousand five ninety two. Therefore, your lease receivable is thirty thousand four hundred and eight dollars. That's the amount of the receivable as you begin to go through year number one. Let's look now at the end of that first year. What happens when we get to twelve thirty one year one? Well, we have to do two. We have to do one thing first, and then we have to make a payment. The first thing is time has passed. Any time time has passed, then we take the balance or the principal, which is thirty thousand four hundred eight, and we multiply it times the interest rate that you're using. The lessor always uses the implicit rate. So therefore, the interest for that first year is going to be $3,041. Now, I know this may have looked difficult when you saw this in school, but it basically is simply keeping up with the receivable, multiplying it times your interest rate, and that's the interest that you're going to recognize. What entry do we make? They don't pay interest. Interest is not paid on a lease. It's recognized as part of the payment. So we come over here and we debit lease receivable. This is just a compounding entry. Anytime you recognize interest but don't pay it, you compound it. We debit lease receivable for 3041 Now you can debit interest receivable, but I don't think that's going to make any difference on the CPA exam. They're going to want to know the amount of the receivable, 3041 and you credit interest revenue, $3,041. If you're taking the financial accounting part of the CPA exam, they very well may ask you how much interest do you recognize in the first year. In this question, that answer would be 3041 and that gets you a point closer to 75. On January 1 of year 2, the next payment is made. Remember the payments were cash, 9,592, and reduced the receivable by 9,592. One of the things you need to always keep up with is how much is the lease receivable? What is that principal? To begin with, it was 30,408. We knew that. Then at the end of that first year, we added in $3,041. At the beginning of the next year, we had a $9,592 payment. So when you're going through year two, the amount of that um, the amount of that lease receivable is twenty three thousand eight hundred and fifty seven dollars. Now that brings us to the end of year two. We come over here to twelve thirty one year two. That receivable is twenty three thousand eight fifty seven. You can see this gets to be very redundant. The implicit interest rate was ten percent you recognize $2,386 of interest in year two. We debit lease receivable one more time, 2386 that's 10%. We credit interest revenue, again for the same, 10%, $2,386. And you're done with the question. It wasn't that hard. If they ask you what the ending receivable was, well, it was $23,857. That was what it was during year two. And then at the end of year two, you add in the $2,386, which is your compound interest, and that gives you a final total on your balance sheet at the end of year two of $26,243. If you can do that problem, and there's absolutely no reason you can't, then you're already taking a real big step to passing this part of the CPA exam. We have a few seconds, so let's very quickly do a little bit on the lessee side. The lessee is the person who's actually using the property. They don't have the title, they're using it. We already know that the future cash flows here are 9592 In the lessor, the present value was, was determined to find the payments. The lessee needs to take those, those payment amounts and find the present value of that. The lessor will not use the implicit rate. The lessor will use an incremental borrowing rate. The lessee uses the incremental borrowing rate. Let's assume in this case that incremental borrowing rate is 12%. The lessee only uses 
the implicit rate, if they know the implicit rate, and if it's less, well, 12% is not less than 10%. You use, if you're the lessee, use the incremental borrowing rate unless you know the implicit rate and it's less. So we'll use 12% here. It's still five periods. It's an annuity due. And I looked that up last night. And that's 4.04. So therefore, the present value is 38,752. The lessee is paying 38,752 for the car. The rest of the payments are interest. So on January 1, year 1, we'll debit lease car for 38,752. And we'll credit lease liability for 38,752. That's different than the lessor because you're using a different interest rate. Remember though, it's an annuity due, so we have to make one more entry. We have to debit lease liability for 9,592, and we have to credit cash for 9,592. Notice the car is on the books at 38,753. The liability is on the books at 38,752, but less that first payment of 9,592, which means the liability is 29,160. The asset and the liability will be different amounts. Let's go and finish this problem off by looking at the end of year two. You've got a car that's on the books at 38,752. You're going to have it for five years. So therefore, your depreciation is $7,750 per year. You depreciate the car. You have a liability, and the liability is $29,160 because of the first payment. The interest rate for the first year is 12%. 12% 12 of $29,160 is 3499 That's your interest. Your two things you have to do on 1231. First off, record the depreciation expense on your car. It's a lease car, but it's a capital lease for $7,750 and create accumulated depreciation for $7,750. And then record your interest expense for $3,499. That's the $3,499 and create lease liability for $3,499. Now, that's a process that can get you points on the CPA exam. You can do that. Go through this video more than once, if necessary, to make sure you can do it. This has been Joe Hoyle, President of CPA Review for Free. You can pass the CPA exam. We believe that. We believe that you can get the 75 points that you need, and you can pass the CPA exam. We have 2,500 free questions at CPA Review for free. We want to help you become a CPA. We want to help you make 75 points and pass that exam. You can do it.